So we've talked before about preparation, preparation, prep oh, happy Sunday, <laughs> right? We've talked before about preparation and what does that look like? Well, I, if you notice lately in the Sunday shorts, I've been referring to the book, but that's because I, I want to encourage you to get the book first, but I like to point out key parts in here because I reference back the book all the time to consistently work on the craft, right? But there's, there's a part in here about practice and we talked about preparation before and how important that is for confidence and letting go of stress and anxiety, but how do you prepare, right? How do you practice? And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And one is the, there's, there, there's a lot of different frequently asked questions, but here's Grant talked about this in the book, but I'm gonna tell you how I practice. Like I don't practice the whole talk over and over and over and over again. I do segments of it. Like I want to make sure, like if I have a 60 minute keynote coming up, I, I, my, my intro is typically 20 minutes, 20 minutes is the intro. So I'll practice the intro over and over and over and just time it on my watch and make sure. And then, then when it's over, I'm like, Oh, 19 minutes, 40 seconds or, uh, 18 minutes, 59 seconds or 20 minutes and four seconds, you know, whatever it may be, you want to make sure that I will practice it over and over to make sure that I'm hitting around the 20 minute mark. So I make sure that that's good. And then my outro is roughly about five minutes. Same thing. I'll practice that segment and then I'll practice certain segments, right? I don't really add the whole talk together until I am preparing a couple weeks in advance for an actual talk. Cause I told you before I practice my keynote typically a couple times throughout the week, even if I don't have gigs. Now that practice does look like segments, right? It doesn't always look like the whole thing at one time, unless I need to do it just to run through the different segments. But before a talk, I will absolutely do it because every talk is going to have a different length versus some people might be 45 minutes. Some people may be 60 minutes, 75 minutes, 90 minutes, what, you know, depending on what they want. And thus I'm going to practice the whole thing at one time, but to make sure timing is down because timing is the absolute minimum that you should be hitting in my opinion. Okay. Um, remember people will forgive you for ending early, but they won't forget if you go over time because as an event coordinator or decision maker, you have pushed their whole event that they've spent so hard working on, you know? Okay. So here's some frequently asked questions about practice. Should I video myself? Um, it can definitely help. Okay. Identify things, but you know, it could get in your head too. I mean, there's a lot of different things here. So all of this is good to know. Reviewing a video back of yourself can be recognized as things. That being said, if videoing yourself is an option, don't let it hold you back. Okay. So I do a lot of mirror work. I don't do a lot of video um, because I do get in my head and it's, it's my own insecurities. And it's not just about speaking. It's about like my body or my actions or things like that. I will become very focused in on my insecurities and then I've completely lost the purpose. I know that about myself. Ergo, I do not. Okay. Should I practice in front of other people? This is different for everybody. Okay. I, I, I have not personally, um, like Grant said, I typically don't do this, but a lot of people do practicing in front of the wrong people might be discouraging versus encouraging. So if you're going to practice in front of somebody, I would practice in front of intentional people. So if I did practice in front of someone, I would honestly practice in front of my speaking mentors or other speakers that I trust their opinions, because I, when I practice in front of somebody, I'm looking for people to critique my stage craft, my ability to present, not my message, which, you know, so that's something I really look for in value. And I've actually had speaker friends and audiences before. And I'm like, Hey, will you watch this one part at about 20 minutes? I want to make sure like my body language is hitting for this. Like I really seek to level up my presentation and my entertainment side more than anything. Um, Number three, should I practice in front of a mirror? <laughs> this is what I do. And Grant said, I typically don't do this, <laughs> which, Hey, everybody has their own thing, but the message is the main thing, not the way you look delivering it. So the reason I practice in front of mirrors is because I, I, it's just what I do. It's like working out in front of a mirror. It helps correct form and it helps keep you motivated. So sometimes I just do that. Okay. Sometimes I just do. So notes or no notes is another question when practicing your talk. In my opinion, no notes. You should not have any notes in your hand, no posted notes, no nothing. Like again, you should know your content. This is one reason practicing is so critical and important. There's a bug flying around. I might lose my mind. So if you see it happen live, like that's totally just let it happen. <laughs> this is a 
this. This is reality. Okay. Okay. Yes. So if you need to use notes, if you need to have notes, just boil it down to some keywords to keep you on track, to keep you on track. I really appreciate a confidence monitor. I love a good confidence monitor. It's the monitor that sits facing you. So what I love about the confidence monitor is it shows me my next slide. Even though I know, I like to know that. I like the confidence monitor also has the timer on there where it's counting down how much time you have left. Again, I do, I set, here's a fun fact about me. I set, like if I have a 60 minute talk, right when they're announcing me on to go on stage, I set my, on vibrate, on my watch, I'll set it to 55 minutes and I start it. And so I know that no matter what I'm doing, and again, I've practiced this, but you know, there's room for spontaneity in talks when you know your content. I know when it goes off, it is time to start the outro because I have five minutes to go. So yeah, that's a, yeah. Practice makes perfect. Just kidding. I hate that saying practice doesn't make perfect practice. Cr <laughs> practice just makes improvement. I want to, I want to be clear about that. Practice makes improvement. We should never shoot for perfection because we just won't get there. Right. We just won't get there. That does not exist, but practice makes improvement. And I think that's really, really powerful, right? Always improving. So, uh, practice, prepare, have confidence in your message and go slay the day friends. Talk soon. Bye.